Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Dan, again. It's Monday again. Oh my goodness. Where does the time go when you're doing work on a video game? I don't know, you guys. I don't know if you can tell me or not, but I've got some people here that can help me possibly answer that question. Say hi, everybody. Hi. We got Carly, we got Steve. Say hi, Steve. Hello, hello. And we got Jonathan as well. Say hi, John. Hello, Governor. Hello, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Time for some more... Actually, no, not time for some more. I was nearly about to say time for some more block out stuff, but no. We ended up finishing that on Thursday. So, um, yeah, kind of... On Thursday, it was, kind of, it was kind of a thing I had to contact Carly and say, Oh my goodness, Carly, I'm nearly finished with the block out. We need to do an emergency stream. So we ended up uh, finishing that on Thursday, I'm afraid. So if you missed it, you can go back and watch it on YouTube. It's it's all there and uh, it's all good. So I'm going to be doing something a bit new uh, this week. And I have some people here to help me out with this because uh, it um, I don't have... I don't have much information on how to do this stuff just yet, so things might be a bit shaky at first, but we'll get there eventually. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be placing the interactables in the world, all the pickups and things that the players will find. Um, starting out on level 6, because the whole team is working on other levels, and I'm under instructions, no touchy. No touchy levels 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. So I've said, right, I'm making level 6 my priority. You guys, no touchy level 6. So we're gonna crack straight on with that so just to give you a bit of an idea of what I'm gonna be doing so you see here we have two med kits and I have placed here two med kits not that much of a shocker to be honest but that's what I'm gonna be doing just fleshing out the world with these objects using props and all those kinds of things just filling out the world really it's gonna be gonna be doing that for the next two hours so uh, yeah Got my crew here with me, so let the witty batter, the witty banter, commence. That is your guys' cue to start talking. <laughs> well, that being said, I think everything Daniel was saying was just a nice way of saying I shifted my work over to him, and now I have to help him figure out how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. So um, yeah, let's get straight on with things so um, yeah John's here to help me if I just say John do we have a severed arm prop in the game he'll either say yes or he'll say no if he says yes uh, I'll go searching for it if he says no we move on so John yeah yes do we have a severed arm prop in the game right now prop no interactable blueprint most likely all right, so I guess we can move on from that one then. Good start. <laughs> no, I didn't say move away from it. I just said the, the blueprints there. Oh, okay. So what should I be placing then? Well, we need to go into the blueprint folder and then mm -hmm. look into the pickups. It should be there because it is something you can actually pick up in the game. Interactables, uh, pickups, yep, there. There should be a severed arm in here. I see a severed head. Uh, so, I have my I have my window off screen, guys, because there are a lot of items that need to be placed. So in order to make things easy for me, I have my uh, content browser on another window, which you unfortunately can't see. So you're actually going to find that under interactables slash pickups slash junk. Junk. Okay. Ah, there it is. Okay. <laughs> there it is. There's the severed arm. Now, I would like to be able to pick it up and slap someone across the face with it, but <laughs> whether or not we'll do that is another story. <laughs> that would be funny. Just go up and... You, mutant! <laughs> Challenge you to a duel. Yep, so... That'll give you guys a gist of what we're going to be doing today, so... Right, we're going to go hunting for props or places to put things, so... Um, is there a way to master place props slash creature placeholders, or do you have to do each one manually? Uh, have to do each one manually. Um, cool. 
Let's see. Interactables. Do we have a target identifier? We do. If you want to be really slick, you can actually mm -hmm. select your text and then replace that with the actual object you want to use. But that's up to you. Yeah, I want to keep this text though in the in um in the in the editor but not visible in game, don't I? So I don't really want to replace things. No worries. Just, yeah. Aha, there's there it is, target identifier. So and we've got a little yeah, little headset here. Uh, I'm, if I do this in um this might be a bit difficult because uh, if I do it in unlit mode, you guys won't be able to see very well what I'm placing. But if I do it in lit mode, the camera likes to do this oh, yeah. thing where things get really, really dark when I have something selected. I don't know what causes that, but um, I wish I could turn it off somehow. Uh, so, uh, If you want to show me, I might actually tell you exactly what it is. Um, can you see the stream mm -hmm. so if I so I have that object selected and everything right now is just really really dark but if I press escape everything just brightens up for some reason it tends to happen with text and some other things that is the auto exposure and you can go ahead and get rid of that uh, by following these quick simple steps okay go ahead and make a post process volume uh, post process volume it will be under the oh, yeah. visual effects tab on the side of your screen there. Yeah, I see it. When you make that, go ahead and make it encompass the entire level. It should only take like a moment. Ooh, okay. All right, one sec, guys. This is easiest or most easiest done if you're in an orthographic viewpoint. Mm -hmm. So if you're like if you're in like top or side. Uh, you'll need to be in that anyway to ensure that it encompasses everything you're working with. I'm using the... Um, I'm not sure the name for it, but I'm using a tool to expand it out, so it should be fine. A scaling tool. Yeah. All right, so once you have that, it doesn't have to be precise because when I go back through this level, I'm going to actually remove your process volume and replace it with a custom one. So okay. it's just kind of a temporary solution. Okay. Uh, I think that should just about cover everything. Yeah, that looks good. All right, now within the settings of this particular volume, go ahead and scroll down to auto exposure. Uh, is that in details? Yes. Okay, it's right above, yep, right there. Um, actually, okay, go down to the bottom. It should be under... There's that a is strange. Little, yeah, there's a little bit of a delay. Okay, uh, try the exposure tab. You go up just a little bit more. Exposure tab. It's going to be above. <coughs> oh, uh, ambient. See where it says ambient occlusion? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see it there. All right. So the right or lower it says camera. Go ahead and roll that exposure tab out. Camera. Oh, right. Yes, I see it now. Okay. But not the ambient occlusion, the actual exposure tab. It's a few above above that. Right there. But yep. Okay, so change the min brightness to two. Min brightness to two? Mm-hmm. It's going to basically disable it and just fix it at a certain exposure value. Nice. Okay. Is that all I have to do for that? For now, yep. It should always be the same uh, brightness value no matter what you do. Cool, thank you very much. So that solves that problem. Yep. And I've lost where I was. We'll find it. Yeah. Hey, I got a quick question. Carly, did Jonathan and Daniel stream on the same day? Yeah, last week. Unbelievable. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because Daniel had his surprise stream. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll be back Unexpected. on the 16th, too, with uh, Chris. Okay, yeah, I'm just gonna make sure this file name for you, Carly, you know Thank that you. It's, a, it's a double. I'm gonna write surprise. Just write double trouble. 
Double trouble. <laughs> yeah. Everything's really dark now. Did I change a wrong um, value? You said min brightness, didn't you? Yeah, I did. That should fix it, but that could just mean that your lights are very weak because the exposure was compensating for it for. I can see your light uh, illuminating. So what I would do is select the light mm. in front of you. Intensity is at 1. Yeah, that's exactly why. So here's another way you can fix that. Try setting the min brightness to like 5 and do the same thing for max. That may, if it's not 5, it should be 1 or 0. Okay. Instead of setting the light, though, you can just do this globally for the uh, the exposure values. Yep, on the on the process volume. Yeah. So it's under exposure with a little yellow. Uh, yes. Uh, what do you call? Yeah. I have it. So open. You, you actually wanna. You'll want to have. Sorry about cutting you off, but you, you will want to have your uh, lighting mode turned back on, so you can actually see the changes you're making in real time. Okay. So try setting min and max to the five. That may fix it. And if it doesn't, there's another trick that we can do. Okay. Um, did you set it to five? I did now. It's made things a little bit worse. <laughs> All right. I'll try do it for max as well. It has to be both. Yeah, I've done it All for right. both. Try zero and zero then. Whoa. <laughs> It's all been bleached. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit brighter. Now try maybe one and one. That might actually fix this. I just, I just set max brightness to one, and that seems to have done it. Okay, cool. The stream is a little slower than... Uh, yeah. What I could, there you go. That's more like it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Mm. It doesn't... Mm. Eh, I'll figure this out later. It's still happening, but we'll figure this out later. I don't want to really waste the whole stream time getting this sorted out. So, uh, There's one more thing you can do that's really quick. What's that? If you go to Exposure under the Lit tab at the very top next to Perspective, and then you uncheck Game Settings and set the Exposure value to whatever you prefer, that will override any settings you currently have, and you can go as high or as low as you want. Could you repeat that to me just really slowly? OK. <laughs> so click on where it says Lit next to Perspective uh, inside of your Unreal viewport. Oh, right, yeah. OK. All right, so once you've done that, yep. uncheck where it says Game Settings at the very bottom. Sorry, am I supposed to be right-clicking on it? I missed that. No, just left click on the on the word lit. Oh, okay, right. Okay, yes, yeah. right. Game settings, it's, yeah. It's, it's lit, fam. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, unclick or sorry, uncheck game settings, and then just drag uh, the EV one hundred value to whatever looks best for you. That should also do the same thing. Right. Okay. So set it to minus seven. Does that work now? Yes. Going lower increases brightness. Going higher reduces it. Okay, so minus five. All right. Minus six. Yeah, minus six. And I can select things now. And I can see. Yay. Right, cool. Yeah, that fixed it. Thank you. Mm hmm All right, so, yeah, we got that place down. Let's move on. Also, since we have a good group of people today, so if you have any questions, just make sure to use at Night Dive Studios, and we'll do our best to answer. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I should show you guys. So we've got it so that when you actually pick up an audio log uh, in this version of the game, it actually plays the original audio log um, from... Uh, the 1994 version so oh that's our human corpse by the way um does he have a name actually in do, have we given this poor fellow a name fred fred okay i do, I do like that placeholder um <laughs> ggg says why are all why are you so cool 
at Night Dive Studios. Aww. Is that for also, all of us? Yeah. Aww. And also, Darth wants a reminder who is all here. Um, so if we want to introduce ourselves so people can hear our voice and recognize who's talking, that'd be good. Okay, sure. So starting with me, I'm Carly. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. And you can continue on down the line. Steve. Psst, Steve. Psst. <laughs> Wake up. This is Esteban. <laughs> 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 hmm. What does Esteban do? Oh, I'm the CEO. I'm oh. just keeping tabs on everybody. <laughs> yeah, you didn't say what you do, Carly. For Big fun. Brother's always watching. Um. Oh, me? I'm Carly, and I do Carly things. <laughs> Community management stuff and producer type yeah. stuff. Yeah. You can tell by the way that she Dang. is. Mm-hmm. I'm Daniel. I'm the oh, I'm level designer slash producer slash general busybody at slash Night Dive Studios. <laughs> yes. I, I guess. How it's many hats my do you turn. have? How many hats? Yeah, your turn. Jeez, a lot. All right, it's your turn. <laughs> it, it is. It, it's my mm, turn. Yeah. Now? Yep. Okay. Just making sure. I don't want to talk over a, a four-person party here. So I'm that guy. I'm John. I do... Uh, what the heck do I even do? I do so much stuff, it's hard to consolidate it down. Uh, level artist, lighting artist, prop artist, uh, texture artist. Artist. There you go. Artist. Uh, that's the word. Just things. We do things. Things we do, many things we make as many machines work as possible. We try and keep them as well oiled as we can. So yeah, hopefully, when I pick this audio audio log up that I placed in the world just before we went on on uh, stream, it should play the correct audio log. Diego just left. He sold us out. I can already hear the Here's cyborgs on their way. Uh, from the dining office. hall's a ah. dead end. Sorry, one sec. No one I only hope that. Bianca made it out of the trap. If anyone can make it up there and use the chip, it's her. I only hope we're still holding when these doors go down. That cyberjack is Shodan's Achilles heel. Okay, now they can hear you. Whew. Uh, Wolfenbach says... Ah, today, I'll ask the question then. So what can you do to optimize a game in Unreal Engine? You know, in the Unreal, Unreal Engine? That is a good question. I'm qualified to answer that. <laughs> Come on, Daniel. Uh, you know the answer. Th that, is, that is a good question, one to which I don't really have an answer for, because that would be more of a match thing, because it's more a programming thing, really, I guess. It's actually a combination of both. It's programming and artist. Uh, you have to work together as a congruent team in order to actually optimize the game. If either side doesn't do their part, then you end up with a hot mess. Mm hmm All right. Here's a question for anyone who was wanting to answer. Any of you excited for the new Doom Eternal? Oh, hell yes. I'm guilty of not seeing any footage for that yet. I Same. haven't watched any trailers yet either because I kind of want it to be fresh. I thought that uh, Doom 2016 was like one of the best games I've ever played. Oh yeah, it was so fun. You know, uh, fun fact about Doom. Um, some of you guys know that I work for another company as well, and I'm the product manager for one of the texturing tool sets they make. And I am not kidding even slightly when I saw the trademark uh, Mark of Zorro, which is like a Z-shaped uh, scratch in metal that is in... It's very prominent on Mars and Doom on some of the metal surfaces. And I'm like, I'm just sitting there grinning ear to ear like an idiot because I'm like, they used our stuff in that game! Ah! <laughs> nice. Quick question about that audio log. Was that the original audio or has it been modified? 
Uh, that was the original. Um, what I did was I extracted the audio from the original game, gave it to Matt and said, go nuts. And he basically assigned all of the audio logs. So you, there's a different audio log and each audio log has an audio file attached to it. So when you pick up the audio log, for now, it just plays the original, um, the original dialogue. Yes, I said basically. Also, uh, Sir Kane's like, uh, so programming stream when? Uh, sorry, say again? Programming stream when? Mm. <laughs> and the answer is, who knows? Um, Jonathan, I'm sorry, I've lost the audio log things again. Where are they to be placed? Oh, yeah, that's uh, so from the blueprints folder. You're looking for the pickups, and from is it in interactables or inventory? It should be in interactables under pickups, and then audio logs, and then each deck you're working on is filtered in there with the appropriate right. naming convention. Yeah, okay, I've, yeah, I see it now. The yep. Guys, I, I have to say there are a lot of folders here, and sometimes it can be a bit easy to get lost. But that's I'm only saying that because I've literally seen this thing for maybe like under an hour. <laughs> I'm, I'll am i get used to it as I go, but right now it's a little bit maze-like. So I want Perry. Where's Perry? That's, that's why I'm here to help you out. <laughs> There's Perry. Um, here's a question when you're ready. Will there be a mod SDK for System Shock, System Shock Remastered? We're going to have to work with Epic on that. Um, so probably not at launch, unless that's something that they are going to want uh, or that they'll help us with. Um, but it would be pretty advantageous, I think, for us to include some kind of mod support at some point. But currently, we don't have that planned. It was a stretch goal uh, that we didn't meet initially. so. Uh, we can't promise it at launch, but it's definitely, I mean, it's something I would want to do. What about you, Dan? I love seeing what people do um, with modding, so I'd be interested in seeing if we could do that. As someone who got their start modding video games and became mm -hmm. an artist and works in the industry because of modding video games, I think it's a good thing to shoot for. But I'm kind of biased there. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I, I know that feeling. I'm the same. Uh, John, do we have a skeleton? Dude, that's a really good question. And I don't know. Let me look in there for you and find out. Okay. You could probably just use... Yeah, we don't have a skeleton yet. Uh, you could use the human corpse as a stand-in and just leave the tag that says a skeleton on it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Where's Fred? He's in effects. There he is. <laughs> Poor Fred. He did. Um, he did. He, he did, how, Fred. Uh, dead Fred? Here's a question. How far along are the first-person animations and weapon models? <laughs> Alright, that's the answer. <laughs> Love that. Oh, first-person animations and weapon. Oh, well, all the original weapons have been modeled. Uh, and they're in but we're just we're testing them right now so uh we won't be doing any final art for quite a while until we've got the uh the mechanics working i hope we uh get to make the spark beam look like a type 2 phaser again hmm. yep yeah me too i we we should just use that model that we had um from the first Unreal demo, because it was, it's fine, it's perfect. It's the one that uh, you textured, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I actually have a Type 2 phaser that I modeled and textured it. We could, no, we don't want to get sued. No, we could put that in there as an Easter egg. <laughs> <laughs> Pick up underscore medipatch, there we go. I really hope we put the uh, the riot gun in there. That thing was so much fun to, to mess with. Oh, 
Oh, now for some reason the filters thing has started working for me. Alright. Not gonna complain. So, uh, just gonna nip an engine and just test that real quick. Uh, here's a question. Will there be a flashlight or night vision utility for low light, no light situations? Memory is failing me regarding this aspect of the original game. Um, you got that, Dan? Or? Shall I repeat? Yes, please. Sorry, I was looking at something. Will there be flashlight or night vision utility for low light slash no light situations? Memory is failing me regarding this aspect of the original game. Uh, in this level, actually, the one that I'm working on, there is a night vision enhancement uh, implant that you can get. So, once you get to level 6, yes. Also, are you guys showing complete locations with textures on stream here? It would be nice to see some done locations. Uh, we don't have any done locations, but I could show off some stuff if that's okay with Steve and John. Hey, I just work here, man. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, Esteban, whatever your name was. That's totally <laughs> fine. Um, if you want to show off some stuff. I was going to on my stream, but my my build like completely broke. Um, because I was trying to update to the 4.2.1. Place it. And then I couldn't pull because my source control is just totally borked. Oops. Yeah. Daniel. Daniel. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Speak, speaking of flashlights, I need you to do something that people are going to like. Okay. Please go to a dark area. Uh. Don't trust him. <laughs> Never go to a dark area alone. <laughs> <laughs> A uh, dark area. Hang on a sec. Yeah, there's something that's not as bright as this particular area that you're in. Or I could just delete a light and say, okay. You could do that, but that's that's faster, and we we have plenty of time. Right there, right there is perfect. Okay. Stop, stop it. Stop moving. Okay. Right there. Yep, 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 yep. Wherever, you, whatever you're looking at, you're in that grove area. Just chill. All right, play from here. Okay. All right. So if you're, I'm waiting for the screen to catch up to show me what you're doing does not appear that you're playing from here. I am playing now, but it'll take a second. Oh, yeah. OK. Press F. Did you, oh, did you press F? I pressed F. And I'm, not paying, now? and I'm not paying respects, guys. There's a flashlight. Oh, my god. <laughs> I was going to do that. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I noticed that Matt had put a flashlight in, and I just thought that'd be kind of cool to show off. Although I don't know if we're going to keep it the way it is, because it was tied to the head-mounted lantern. But I think it's kind of cool like that, too. So there's that. Wow, that's fun. Have you guys ever been in a multiplayer game on PC and like there's a new player and they're like, hey, how do I do this? And you go, oh, uh, all F4 is the high. <laughs> oh my and God. Like, they immediately leave the game and you're like, <laughs> got used, used to do that in Counter-Strike. I think it was. <laughs> What the heck was that? There was a key combination that would kill the game that wasn't obvious as Alt F4. It was something else. Reported. Right, just need oh, to I check this. I can't remember it now. It's going to drive me nuts. Audio log is the right one. Shodan has proven itself a brilliant biochemist. Hmm, that's not right. I should have been more clear on this. Hmm. It was F10. Can, That's what can, it was. I can change it later. It's probably that one. Um, will you be following original corpse slash item slash weapon placement, or will you change them to be maybe more realistic? Uh, for the most part, it's going to be the same. Uh, some things we might change up, but we'll need to have discussions about that. Do we have a single chair? Like, not not a group of, like, three chairs, like the lounge stuff, but just a single chair on its own? Uh, I know that in the 
model drop that I just got from our community guys that we we're volunteering their time to dig through the original assets that we do have chairs and whatnot. However, I haven't gotten around to adding the chairs just yet. I've Okay. So No problem. We'll move on. But yeah, I... in terms of... Oops, sorry, go ahead. No, it's fine. I'm just going to start at the original game. Apologies, there's going to be a loud noise in a sec. Oh no, there won't be a loud noise because I turned the volume down. Uh, please tell me that it still goes to level 5. Uh, no, it doesn't. Um, give me a moment while I restore my original saves. Somebody feel free feel free to talk, guys, while I just saw something out. I was gonna say that in terms of changing things around in the original, like I've already taken the liberty of doing that in some regards with level design, or at least room design. Uh, some of the stuff in the original game just makes no sense at all. Mm -hmm. uh, like the. How dare you, sir? <laughs> Excuse me, sir. The game had a, a, a white light on the floor, and you have to keep that there for a contingency stake, sir. I don't really uh, respect the original. <laughs> but oh I, I lived, I lived, and I breathed, and I ate this game for like most of my childhood. So I, I have the the nerd cred to say there's something wrong here, and that's okay. It's it's people game. make mistakes. That reminds no, I didn't. Me of that line from uh, <laughs> Happy Gilmore: "You eat shit for breakfast." <laughs> That's right, I remember that now. Wow. <laughs> you know, I, I hold back my, my swearing, and then Steve just kind of just like, You eat shit for breakfast, boy? <laughs> <laughs> this is an unrated stream, we're allowed. Yeah, yeah. That works too. But, but no, yeah, in terms of uh, changing stuff, it, you, some of the stuff in this game just really, I think it's because of level constraints or texture memory constraints or something they had to reuse some assets in certain areas because they had a certain texture palette per level um which is one of the reasons why you would find some areas just that make no sense at all where like you go into a medical area and it's just white lights everywhere um so yeah i mean i think we've tried to intelligently change what's there while respecting the original theme and idea of the game as much as possible so it's for those of you who are very much purists, I wouldn't worry too much. It's not like we're going to, you know, turn this into... Um, uh, it's not going to go astray. That's that's the word I'm looking for. There's some questions in chat. Um, if you guys are ready for them. Yep. In the area next to the theater, there is a jagged crack in the walls that is from damage to the station, or was it by design? Don't know. Okay. The theater? I don't recall there being a theater in the game. Yeah, there is. There's a cinema. Um... Wait, are you talking about that viewing room on the exec Yes. Desk? Yeah. Okay, I never called that or thought of it as a theater. I always thought of it as a viewing room. Well, yeah, I know what you're talking about now. Tomato, tomato. I'm actually at that location <laughs> now on the stream. You'll see it. But yeah, there is a huge crack in the wall. I'm not sure. It might be... I don't know. I don't know what could have caused it, but it must have been one heck of a crack. Oh, you're talking about the, the piping in the wall there. Yeah, that's... Um, that is... weird. Hmm. I mean, it's there ostensibly so you can be... Uh, not even ostensibly. It's literally there only so you can be attacked by the cyborgs on the other side. That's about yeah. it. Hmm. I think there's better ways of going about that, perhaps by actually having the walls torn apart and destroyed and still keeping the darkness there, which would just make a little bit more sense. Um, here's another question. How do you plan to make the enemy AI, AI unique and also work with this, the station's environment? We'll have Matt do it. All right. <laughs> That's the answer to everything, right? That's a Matt problem. Yeah, it's a Matt. It's, yeah, I mean, the AI is, you know, is going to behave in a way that complements the enemy design so much in like let's reference doom 2016 is like the perfect example 
you've got your mixture of different enemy types and they all behave in a very uh, specific way that's often um, uh, like telegraphed so for instance like the pinky monsters they uh, will like stop their feet before they charge you but they're invulnerable from the front so you have to kind of circle straight around and shoot them from behind um, I don't think that there's maybe the gorilla tiger would be kind of a good example of something similar but we're gonna have you know a mixture of ranged melee uh, different type of heroes or I'm sorry um, heroes enemies uh, that all behave differently so that when we mix and match those enemy types in a, in a like a location where there's combat it adds a lot of variety to the gameplay and how you approach um, those particular scenarios uh, at least that's kind of the philosophy that we're going for uh, and then of course when you mix in the different ammo types different weapons that have different effects on different creatures it's uh, going to add up to a pretty interesting experience for a shooter you know there's something else that we can look into as well that i'd, I'd really like to do which is taking the audio logs from the original and kind of extrapolating enemy behavior from it um, a lot of the medical logs reference mutants nesting in access corridors and fighting over remains of dead people. That'd be really neat to see in the game. Yes. Yeah, more um, idle stuff, more like environmental storytelling through the enemy animations when they're not in combat. Um, one of the things I would love to see is, you know, you've got your, the serve bots are the first thing you see. And instead of them just kind of waiting for you outside the door when you open that first door to medical you look in and one of the serve bots is like clawing through the remains of somebody and then it notices you you know stuff hmm. like that kind of flesh out the world yeah I, that would be really cool I need to listen to an audio log one second guys just need to make sure I've got the right one in the right place Oh, that's not helpful. Are you ready for more questions? Uh, in one moment. Okay. Ah, uh, okay, go, go, uh, question, yes, <laughs> sorry. Are you okay? That's my question. I'm trying to work out why I can't get sound in my game. Oh. All right, here's a question. I think this was touched on before, but will you be taking artistic license with regard to placement of appropriate additional props? I make a kitchen look like a kitchen. Yes. Oh, so. yeah, we have to. I mean, we have to, we still have to figure out where these guys go to the bathroom. <laughs> no bathroom. Not allowed. Has proven itself a brilliant Everyone must hold it. I swear it's like a subtle Star Trek reference in this game because in none of the series do you ever find a restroom. True. I feel like it's a, that's something they're like they're like this is unnecessary. One sec, guys. <laughs> Well, it's Showdown funny too, because if you look at like the technical blueprints, you'll actually find restrooms on the bridge, but you never actually see them in the show. <laughs> well, I don't want to watch anyone go to the bathroom. <laughs> that would be highly wrong. All we want to see is a toilet. We don't want to see people use it. Wait, <laughs> this conversation just took a really weird turn. Human corpse there. I forgot actually how empty this level is with regards to things on the floor. There isn't many. I sent my Tamagotchi to daycare and he's playing soccer. Yay! 
I have to say, Daniel, I think it's kind of cool how you have uh, Shock 1 chilling out on the top of your screen there. <laughs> yeah. I may have to, to steal that idea from you for my stream. <laughs> Here's a question. Will there be hero-style monsters like the Uniques from Diablo? Uh... Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's something I didn't think about. I don't think that's the that was ever a plan, but that's not a bad idea. I mean, we could even incentivize killing the higher level or at least... Yeah, I'm not sure how we would do that. We'd have to do something with their skin texture or something to make them stand out and the more loot on them, but... Uh, I think the basic idea is just to add variants of the monsters, not necessarily make them more um, difficult to kill. I know what they're trying to say, but Diego pretty much fits the bill for the boss monster. Hmm. Okay, I'll be the boss monster. <laughs> just putting these in as placeholders for now they'll probably get changed to their proper chairs later but yeah just filling it out a little bit actually if anything they're going to get changed to the original chairs oh right okay because i still have to put those in there Uh, third player says, but didn't you once say something of commanders that order monsters around so a strong enforcer leader mob could be such a thing um, in reference to the boss monsters? That was before the hiatus. Mm -mm. Mm. All right, and then... Um, yeah, I was going to say, that sounds, that sounds like something somebody else would say. Okay, so <laughs> then Shodan does order specific cyborgs to do her bidding. Maybe those could roam around. Yeah, you, you've got cyborg... 73 N and whatever all those guys they are in the world they could be mm. I suppose it could be that makes things a bit interesting hey Daniel yes could you um could you tell me how many how much you hate it putting the words trapped in the logo on every wall you could find um, <laughs> oh yeah this area not that much I just I'm watching your stream and I keep seeing trapped in the logo Okay. <laughs> Need constant reminders of where we are. Mm-hmm. Trapped right. I'm sure thought of it. It's kind of evil, like isn't it? Nah. They're, like <laughs> reinforcing that you you work here forever. Don't forget, you're here forever. Um, oh, I question. like that Simpsons reference. <laughs> yes. Do it uh, for her. What do game developers and your team use for version control? Is Git common? I'm only really familiar with web development. We, yeah, we, yeah go ahead. Sorry, I, I was going to say, yeah, we're using Git. Um, uh, Bit, Bitbucket, is it? I forget the name now. It's not typical for game developers to use this type of source control. Um, mm. We are actually probably going to have to migrate pretty soon because the project is getting to a scale and scope that isn't really good for this type of management. But I guess we. Uh, Maddie was saying that he was going to. We're going to figure that out later. We could try Alien Brain. We could try Alien Brain. I haven't used that before. Uh, I've heard thing about it. Yes, sir. What's Sorry. Up? Um, we have a. Do we have a ML standard rounds as a prop? Uh, yeah, but they should be called. Uh, let me check. Uh, it's a good thing I have Unreal up while we're talking, because it's very easy to check all this. Because you know where it's at. Because I can find the uh, mini pistol in interact interactables pickups art temp models weapons, but. So it's going to be called pickup underscore ammo underscore mini pistol standard rounds with underscores in between. And it's under uh, interactable slash pickup slash ammo. 
Interactables, pickups, ammo. Okay. Ammo. Indeed. Did you find it? Yes, yeah, I found it. The, the The name of the file is so long that it doesn't all fit into uh, the uh, content browser, so I just had to click on it and have a look myself. Uh, yeah, two it's M quite long. Yeah, mini pistol standard rounds. Okay. Ooh, it's just a just a white box. Okay, that'll do. Pretty much all the ammo is a white box, if I recall correctly. Mm hmm. Quick question for you, Daniel. Is yep. it a magazine or is it a, is it a clip? Uh, well, it's a handgun, so I would imagine it's a clip. Eh. <laughs> eh. What do you mean? Eh. It's a magazine. A <laughs> what? Why is it? Why is it a magazine? The magazine is the uh, device that contains the uh, clip of bullets, rather than there being like you can't actually physically connect a bullet clip to a gun without a magazine to hold it. So. Well, I'm I'm sorry. Oh, you guys clearly have a better understanding of guns than us Brits ever will. Oof! Ouch. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that hurts. <laughs> I'll leave that in your court. I mean, it hurts, but not as bad as a gunshot does. <laughs> wow. Oof! Shots fired. Wow. Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop now. <laughs> question. Maybe it was a question before, but any plan for VR support? Yeah, I think I've answered this every time. Every yeah, I think stream. so too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but people aren't here for every stream. We didn't hit that. We did not hit that stretch goal. Um, again, just like modding, it's something that I I believe would be really cool. Um, there will be a VR version of the source port that's coming out. That is one hundred percent happening. That'll be uh, awesome. So yeah, it'll be very interesting to see. Can we take a moment just to appreciate how crazy they were back then to implement virtual reality into Shock One in nineteen ninety four? Yep. Let's just say though, if you do play System Shock in VR and you don't come back out, it's not our fault. We're not liable. <laughs> <laughs> if Shodan does absorb your soul, we're not liable. So no suey. So. <laughs> Here's a question from Too Many Critics. Will there be reference to Night Dive staff in the final product? Maybe in-game crew quarters labeled as belonging to um, NDS team members? Maybe. Um, I was actually going to talk with the guys at one point about maybe changing the gun names, although that might be a bit of heresy at this point, because so you guys know that the first two letters of every single gun are the initials of the of the development team, right? Oh, I see where you're going with this. Yeah, so... Uh, I don't I was, feel like we can take that out without people hating us. I know, that's the thing. I'd, I'd love to um, well, like be the DG riot gun or there'd be a KW mini pistol or something. The RW forty five ion rifle will still be named after Rob Waters. Oh yes. huh. let's, let's, let's rename it no. to the new Rob Waters. <laughs> so pit N R W. New sorry Rob, but you're being credited as the new Rob Waters. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Pretty sure um, we're gonna be in the game though. I mean we kinda have to be. We gotta I die. Love that idea. I mean, it can't just be that small selection of crew. I mean, that, that station had hundreds of people on it. Easy. Um, I would love to have just, like, random documents found with nonsense about us on it. Like, uh, like just have some kind of paperwork lying around for Steve, like, hasn't paid his toilet bill, so he can't use the bathroom <laughs> or something. I don't know. Toilet bill? I don't know. That was the first thing that came into my head. <laughs> you can't blame me. That, guys, that's the dart gun model. Well, temporary model. Um, 
Yeah, I think that would be great. I know that everybody is going to get at least an opportunity to put in an Easter egg of their choice on the team. And then, I mean, we should all probably have our own video logs too. I mean, or um, audio logs. That would be cool. That'd be neat. Um, but we got to make sure that they, you know, obviously they kind of stay in canon and uh, we hide them really good so that they're they're more secretive than they are, you know, necessary to collect. Like super hidden. You know, Steve, I know how you die. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, wow. Oh, you're you're an exec, threat? right? You're, you're an exec. Okay. So I guarantee you were part of that group that went on to the uh, Alpha Grove and got or no, Gamma Grove, and got ejected into space because you wanted to get away. <laughs> oh, yeah. I guarantee you. I forgot about that's, that. That's you. Is that how I die? Because you wanted to go off into the Great Black instead of becoming a cyborg or a mutant. And then you just suffocate to death because Shodan is an evil bitch. Yeah, well, <laughs> it happens. Beep boop. I'm if, a robot. Beep if, boop. If Steve wanted to ride Gamma Grove off into the Great Black, then I guess good riddance. Isn't that how the audio <laughs> log goes? Wow. Exactly. That is exactly how it goes. <laughs> Listen, I know I shouldn't have done it, but so I was just love. taking orders. If those, if those trap execs want to ride Gamma Grove off into the Grey Black, good riddance. Here's a question. The dark gun is gigantic. What does it shoot? Spears? <laughs> Actually, in the game, it does, well, at least the manual, it does mention that it fires explosive darts for control of like lab animals. Although I'm not oh. really sure how it controls them. I mean, how do you control something that you're blowing apart with little explosive darts? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, interpretive. John, do we have a skull? A skull? Yes, I believe we do, but it should be a sphere model. Okay. And it should be under pickups and junk. Pickups and junk? Uh, actually, it's soda cans in there. Uh, hold on a second. Let me double check this for you. Pickups, junk. I see seven arm. We have severed heads. We do not have skulls, so you can just toss a severed head in there if you want. Interestingly, too, we also have Abe Guerin's severed head, which you're still going to need to get into the maintenance office. Yes. Poor Abe. Mm-hmm. F. Abe was a badass when you think about it he survived the longest out of everyone he was like alive maybe a day or two like no never mind he didn't survive the longest because anna's group was alive right before you got to them and in the cortex where you were killed them all but aside from them he was like the longest survivor mm -hmm. bianca shula lasted quite a while as well right up until the end yep because she couldn't figure out why she took that turn and then she got nailed by a bunch of the cyborgs mm -hmm. do we have a random uh... pile of human bones <laughs> uh, I don't think we do. You could probably just use a corpse. Sorry, Kali. Oh, I'm just about to read more questions if you're ready. Or one question. Yes. Um, will sodas be drinkable like in System Shock 2? Hmm. <laughs> that would be cool. I, I, I do remember throwing that idea out there at one point. Yeah, if you, if you find a soda in the game, you should drink it. It gives you one health. But remember, I textured it so it's called Tripop now. Tripop, tripop. equals tri health. Oh, oh, you got to name the soda because you textured it? I, I did. Oh. I didn't even ask for permission. I just did oh, it. Oh, my. Oh, why did I never think of that after all these years? What could you name a soda? A copper and you soda can't even get mad, Steve, because you showed it off on Twitter. What? It's true. You that did. was like something I would do, but. It's true. <laughs> now everyone's saying LaCroix. <laughs> and it would be cool to have a drinkable soda, though. Mm. And I'm saying that in System Shot 2, we should have Delacroix. Delacroix. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do that? <clears throat> that was... Uh, that was awful, Daniel. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Will goggles say it not at the end of the game? <laughs> Can, nah. 
Oh my god, if we redo System Shock 2, can we please take that out of it? Nope. Mm, we, nah. can't, we can't really. Nah. <laughs> nah. Sorry. That is like the cringiest moment of the whole game. Please check out my cringe compilation. <laughs> Please try, like, comment, and subscribe. Try not to laugh. It's Smash just a prank, bro. Subscribe. Just a prank. <laughs> Where is the mag pulse? There's the mag pulse. There we go. Two mag pulse clips. Put one there. Put one What'd there. you just say? Mag pulse. The word after that. Uh, clips? Clips. Uh, I believe we established the correct terminology, sir. But I have it in but when you select it in about, the game, it says clips. How about clipazine? Clipazine. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Mega clip. Yeah. Mega I think clip. we can both agree, can all agree to use that now. Mega clip. Clipazine sounds like a barber's magazine. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Where is my mag? There it is. Here's a question. If your release of System Shock Remasters exceeds expectations, will you and your team consider a remake of System Shock 2? Yes. 1000%. Oh, yes. John, is there any way to quickly ground an object to the floor? Uh, I mean, if you just drag the object to the floor from the content browser, it will already be snapped to it. However, no, not that I know of. The only way to do it is just to move it manually. Okay. Because they end up rotating the item to put it on the ground. And, you know, to sort of lay the gun down on the ground, but then it's not on the floor anymore. And I kind of have to go in and kind of micro turn it around a little bit. So I've just wondered. Yeah, that's, that's the only way that I know of. Um, so... Yeah, I mean that should work. It's a pain though if you if you're like a perfectionist and you want to get it exact. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're talking to one. Yeah, well that's good because in the original, uh, there's a lot of floating objects and it really drives me nuts looking at it. <laughs> yeah, there is. Things will be properly grounded in System Shock, guys. Don't worry about it. If if I have a say about it. Speaking of uh, magazines and, and clips and stuff, everybody, clipazine, um, <laughs> you should, uh, anybody listening should do yourself a favor and go look up Extended Mag Upgrade for Shotgun on YouTube. It is probably the funniest thing I've ever seen. It's like this guy pulls the, like the, the shotgun shells match the entire length of the barrel as he pulls them out and reloads them. <laughs> Are you begin to guns? I'm assuming not. Me? No, not terribly. I just think it it's interesting. It's kind of a prerequisite to being an American. You have to yeehaw in there. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God, you just reminded me. There's a city in my state of Florida literally called yeehaw, yeehaw Junction. It is literally yeehaw, called Yeehaw Junction. <laughs> what y'all doing here? Yeehaw Junction? I'm not kidding, and I wish I was. It is literally called Yeehaw Junction, and it's about 60 miles southwest of me, or southeast. Well, kiss my grits. Oh, no. We also have Frostproof, which is a lie because it does frost here. Um, <laughs> we also have uh, Taintsville, which is wow. <laughs> no boy. two Get miles that away. Place. And the reason why it's called Taintsville is because uh, Taint Nowhere, y'all. <laughs> Not the other commonly associated word that you may think of. Teddy Bear Junction, the worst scum hole in the galaxy. <laughs> um, here's a question. Um, 
I know you released the source port code for an old version of the original game, but are there plans to re-release the source code for the source port version of System Shock? The Doom community has done amazing things that could only have been done because ID Software released the Doom source code. Steve, do you want to answer this? Yeah, we will be releasing the source code. Um to the source port. Uh, we released the original code that we that we came across, which had the, um, it was mostly the Mac code, which a, a bunch of uh, people have already modded quite a bit, quite extensively, including a third player who's in here, right? Yeah, he's here. And, um, uh, we're gonna release our code. So the finished code of the source port for that. But for this game, not immediately. And that, yeah, I'm not really sure um, if we can because it's relying pretty heavily on um, the Unreal Engine. So it's not like we have ownership of that. We don't have the ability to, uh, to release it. So, yeah. I mean, the source code's already out there anyway. You can download the engine yourself. Can you actually, is the source code open though? Like, can you actually get into it and change it? I think you can, because I know Epic does take community modifications to the engine and incorporate it into the actual builds. If you look at their updates for like uh, the 420 Blaze It, y'all, uh, you'll see um, yeah. you'll see there's actually a list of contributors to the engine. So I'm pretty sure that you actually do get access to it. It's just heavily licensed and they'll go after you like a madman if you do something you're not supposed to. John. Yeah, yes. <laughs> wow. Do, are, are the detox, are they antidote? Uh, yeah, that should be, that should be it. All right. Um, I'll read more questions. Would y'all agree that the only people to fully complete both System Shock games in the world, whole world is the Night Dive team? I didn't even just say y'all. He wrote it there. <laughs> he wrote y'all? Yeah. <laughs> well, is he asking? Is he asking if if we're the ones who we're going to be the only people who've ever ever built remasters or played through it? I don't know. Clarify. Okay. Please clarify. I assume build. Here's another question. Uh, is there any possible way to see Hacker himself in complete game, mirror, etc.? So they're wondering if you'll be able to see the Hacker. That'd be cool, like Deus Ex style. It would be cool, but um, we kind of want to keep it so that the player is associating themselves with the Hacker. So yeah. being able to see yourself kind of will kind of shatter that illusion however we did make it a stretch goal i believe in kickstarter so that you could select which gender you were going to be so i mean if we keep it the way that i'm thinking the only difference you're going to see is really like the structure of the hands and maybe your feet if you're able to look down which um, we haven't gotten to testing that yet we um, probably should have some kind of reflection because otherwise you're playing a vampire. What? <laughs> could be. Could that could be, be canon. Hacker vampire? My OC? Do not steal. Oh. Um, here we go. Here's something from Too Many Critics. Also, any chance for small nods to other games you guys have? I mean, Shadow Man, Turok, Harvester Strife? Surely there is some potential for Easter eggs there. Probably not Turok. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, there might be a whole thing in licensing about that. Yeah. Um, um, here's another. Oh, if you want to answer that more, you, go ahead. I was just going to read more questions. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, yeah, I have to think about that, but that would be kind of fun. If we could do that. Um,. Next one is what time is the update coming? I remember here. I remember hearing Steven say the update is coming out today. The Kickstarter update? Hmm. Possibly. <laughs> maybe Could even after that. this. Maybe even after this stream, the update will be out. 
Spoilers. Yeah. Yee. Yee. Uh, will the cutscenes be making a comeback? Will they also be remastered? Um, the cut. Yeah. Well, we want to do the same kind of storytelling as the cutscenes, but uh, I think we're all kind of hoping that it'll turn into like a playable um, section or just a, a something that you can experience in the first person but we do understand like you know there's a lot of charm with those older <laughs> those cutscenes. <laughs> they're very memorable um i would personally love to play through the the intro hacking session where uh you get arrested by a trap and um, but we've got time to figure that out whether or not we want to do it as a cutscene or um uh, a playable portion of the game can we can we make it on TV tropes by having the hacker get uh, hit by the butt of a gun and it knocks him out? Is that a thing? <laughs> you know, like you, the like characters in games they can get shot several times, but if you get hit by the butt of a gun, you know they come up to you, they come up to you, they kick you over, and then they go, do it, and then the guy goes, he kind of lifts his gun up and then. Pushes the butt of his gun right in your face and you black out. Oh, and you see it in the first person. Yep. Like you know, they, like that. Like guns shouldn't just fire bullets. They should fire butts of guns. That way you <laughs> not get everybody out. And then the butts of the guns should fire the butts of the guns. So it'll be like that Simpsons episode where like, are you gonna send the the dogs or the bees or the dogs with bees in their mark their mouth <laughs> and when they bark they shoot bees at you? <laughs> It'd be like gun buttception. Maybe actually, maybe. what would be cool is kind of a. Have any of you guys played through Deus Ex the original? Yes, many times. So you know the part where you you get arrested by Majestic Twelve and you go below Unatco HQ, and then mm -hmm. you're you're chilling out in the jail cell. It'd be really cool to have that kind of moment in the beginning where you have to chill out in jail, and then you got like all these guys around looking at you, and then you get saved from the last moment of getting your cra uh, crap kicked out of you by the inmates when Diego comes in and picks you up. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. There are jail cells on the security level, aren't there? Well, he didn't get taken to Citadel uh, uh, yeah. to be in jail. He was taken there to hack the computer, so he was like on yeah. the moon or something. Yeah, that's true. Although, I've heard that New Atlanta is actually supposed to be orbiting Saturn on one of the moons. I don't know how accurate that is, though. Yeah, I, I can't really make up my mind about where the hacker is actually from. Is he from Saturn or is he from Earth? Because Saturn does have colonies on it, but Earth makes more sense because it's not really relatable if Saturn's going to get blown up. You've got to save the Earth, right? But would you and, have a colony called and, New Atlanta on Earth? Yeah, well, yeah, that's true, yeah. And Shodan says, do not be fooled into thinking you have preserved your home planet, which kind of indicates to me that it's Earth, so I don't know. I don't know which way it's supposed to go. It's a mystery. Hmm. Where is that magpulse? There it is. That would be really cool to expand on that intro and make it part of the game. If it even adds like 10 minutes to it, it would just be really neat to have a, a truly fleshed out story that's more than just a cinematic. Hmm. Yeah, that was kind of the way I was envisioning it. Just to add something new as well would be uh, probably just welcome, you know? Hell, they're, they're doing the same thing with the Doom uh, Eternal. I'm going to spoil it for you a little bit, Steve. No. Um, no it's not a terrible spoiler, but they actually have people that aren't dead in it for once. And you get just being you, you get to intimidate them because you're Doom guy and everybody's afraid of you. Hmm. So huh. it'd be kind of like that, except because you're just like a little, you know, pencil necked hacker, but he's like looking down on you and making fun of you or something. You mean somebody in System Shock that's not dead besides you? It'd be fascinating, wouldn't it? It would be interesting, though I guess in System Shock 2 we're led to believe that, spoiler alert, Polito is uh, not dead. Rebecca and uh, Suarez weren't dead, though. 
they somehow survived. That's true. You never you interact never with them. them. Yeah. That was so annoying. Like you go up to that four store that just you know, it takes its sweet time just lifting up, and then the rumbler comes out and chases them away. And it's like you idiots could have just looked behind you and saw that I exist for a split second. <laughs> I, I want to know how that that um, rumbler actually got there because there's no possible way that it could have gotten into that area without them knowing that it was there. Like it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, well, there is actually a um, there's a vent in the ceiling that they came out of. But how did the rumbler come out of there? Did it just like, like become an amorphous blob and kind of pour out of the vent? I don't remember there being a vent. That was in the uh, shock community patch. There oh yeah, you, you're right. You're right. And that, that's how, that's how well done that is. That you can't even tell that it's not the patch. Hmm. We're just being massive nerds now, guys. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. See, this is the only time in my life where I've been able to talk about System Shock and have people surrounding me who actually know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yep. One of us. <laughs> it's uh, so cool being surrounded by nerds, man. Darth says, I think the Rumbler was in the corner and they happened to run up on it annoying. <laughs> Maybe. There is precedent for that. The, the Rumblers are pretty stupid in, in shock, too. Like, sometimes they'll just stand there and look at you until you get real close, and then they get pissed and run at you. Hmm. Uh, John, when I initially put these power stations down, I was putting down SM underscore power station. Now they look all broken and balked. Uh, do we have a new model? Is it SK power station now? Oh, that's really balked. Uh, yeah. Uh, it should be in there. Let me double check with you. Uh, that's going to be under interactables. And it should be just power station as a folder. Yeah, power station is a folder, and it's going to be called Interact Power Station. And that should do what you need to do. Cool. Ideally, anyway. And I can't wait to show off level four a bit more and show some of the nonsensical areas I fixed up again. Hmm. There's one room... Uh, that's in the area with the repulsor lift puzzle that you have to use to get to the locked door in like storage six, I think it is. And in the original, it is just a mishmash of like random medical lights all over the place on the walls. And oh, it's like yeah. super dark with like the, the zero G mutants kind of like hovering around and looking at you all weird. Hmm. But it's just, it's light bulbs everywhere. And it's like, you have light bulbs in the ceiling too. Why, why would you put light bulbs on the walls? Like, are you trying to make people go blind? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, questions. Are any of you into hi fi? Hi fi? Hi fi? High fidelity? I'm assuming. Hi fidelity. Depends on what it is. Yeah. Please clarify. Next question says Have you guys already looked into adding landmarks and changing the art direction a bit? to make navigating the labyrinth of corridors and shafts a bit a, a bit less obtuse? Yeah, well, there's going to be definitely more points of interest. But... Be... Sorry. Go ahead, Daniel. No, uh, it's your stream. Well, well I was going to say, we will be um, all sitting down together, playing through the game and identifying like places where we can expand or make things look cooler. Uh, or, like you say, possibly improving that stuff. So it's definitely on the cards. We just need to schedule a time for it. And uh, it'll probably be streamed as well, I think. Yeah, we want to stream that. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that I was going to mention, though, is that you as the player character are pretty much an outsider to this vast space station and you should be intimidated by it and you shouldn't really just intuitively know where to go uh, because you've never been here before until you get your surgical procedure and then you wake up in a, in a daze true 
true. Um, more questions. I'm getting tagged a lot, so it's uh, lots of different things. I'm going to try to get to everyone's questions. Um, are the cutscenes of the player death going to be in first person uh, perspective then to stay immersive? That would be cool. Yeah, we did talk about one point having the like so how I imagine it would be like the player would fall over and his vision would go all red, but then it would kind of unstatic and you'd just see this cortex river come along and pick him up, like and it'd all remain in first person and you could see like him going into the, um, cool. the body of the cortex river and just the green light switch on and then your view just goes like all static and something cool would happen. I don't know. That, that's how I imagined it would be in a remake. You know what? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go Star Trek here again, but there was a game in the mid '90s called Star Trek Borg, which was like a uh, it had John Delancey back as Q, oh, and he yeah. he sends you on like this uh, goofy little adventure where you you're basically at the Battle of Wolf Three Five Nine, and you're trying to find a way to stop your dad's ship from being destroyed, and because your your dad is the reason why you end up joining Starfleet to begin with, so it's kind of a weird predestination paradox, but you you end up trying to keep your dad from dying so you can get to know him as an adult or something i can't i'm trying to paraphrase as much as i can uh but more to the point there's a there's part of the game where you allow yourself to be or you can allow yourself to be assimilated by the borg and you start seeing your vision go all crazy and you start seeing like text and you hear like the hive mind talking and stuff that would be really neat to add as you you get you know absorbed into the the collective of shodan Huh. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I didn't know that that was a game. I thought it was like an interactive movie or something. It's very loosely a game. It's very much an interactive movie. Um, Here's another question. What languages are you planning to release System Shock source port? English, French, and German? Uh, next question is, will Rob be on that playthrough that we plan to do uh, to uh, go around System Shock and talk about it? Like that meeting one we plan? Yeah, uh, he definitely should be. Um, we'll see if we can get him. I know that he's usually pretty busy, but uh, um, his insight into a lot of this stuff is invaluable. I know that, like, even when we look at some of the older art, we're like, oh, is this what you were thinking here? And he's like, no, actually, this is what I was thinking. And we're like, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> um, and it really, it does shine quite a bit onto the uh, the original game. So, yeah, having him there would be great. Can I please just say again how crazy cool it is to have, like, the same guy who made the original working on the remaster? It is. That's super cool. Like, that is totally unheard of. I can't think of anything else that's ever happened like that. Um, third player says, Did you ever think about swapping places in quest object locations to give it a new spin and surprise for old timers? Um, I know it's it's been discussed. But there are, you know, more people who haven't played the game than people who have. So I don't know, Daniel. What do you think? You're, um, you're like again, like I say, this all could happen during the um, the get together we have, where we stream the game and just talk about what we could improve versus what should stay the same. Um, so I. I yeah, mo most of it should happen there. Um, I get, if if things were to change, we'd probably keep a healthy mix. Like there was, there will be some surprises in there. Like Steve mentioned, uh, with the uh, what was that story you mentioned earlier, Steve, about the uh, mutant being distracted, and then you walk in and he looks up at you and maybe attacks you or something. I, I missed it because I was kind of concentrating. Oh. Yeah, just the, uh, like when you first leave that first room in medical, mm. and uh, 
instead of the serve bots just kind of being there waiting they're like harvesting a corpse that's on the ground something yeah. like that um and then they turn and they notice you um i love in in doom uh they do a couple of things like that like the first enemy you see there's like a little like a little animation of the monster coming down um i don't want to do anything like that where it takes control away from the player uh, or if we do it should be very very fast um, but every time that we introduce a new element of the game, whether it be an enemy or a weapon or something like that, I would like there to be like a deeper reason or a subconscious reason for that thing to be there and to kind of um, show that off in any way we can. So one of the other touches that I um, had hand in with the Unity demo was finding the spark theme. And instead of it just kind of... Um, be lying there in the ground we put a corpse down there and we had like a panel open on the wall or something like that to make it look as if the spark theme was originally used as some kind of tool by the engineers and that it was lying there because uh whoever that was got was caught off guard while they were fixing something and so when you find it it's a little more like you know there's some depth to it as opposed to it just being like here's the next gun in your arsenal um, or here's the next enemy that you face. Um, there should be some more context to that. I'm beginning to light. slowly get better at placing these things. I don't have to ask Chris where things are anymore because I'm starting to get it now. Chris? Jonathan? Uh, that, that, I mean, John. <laughs> I mean, John. Sorry. Hello, Governor. My name is Chris now. <laughs> I don't know what that accent was, but it was not. <laughs> you know, every time I do an accent, someone says that, and it makes me feel so bad about myself. It makes you know, me think of the movie did, I Love You, Man. The first one you did was pretty good. That one was, yeah. I was actually trying, and at this point, I'm trying to say very little because my son is extremely loud in the background. <laughs> um, Timmy Critic says, is there anyone on the uh, Night Dive team who hasn't played System Shock before the Kickstarter launched? And I have to say, I only played System Shock 2. So that's blaspheming me, but that's where I stood before it. You don't have to worry about me, folks. I played the game so many times before <laughs> anything, before I was even hired. Sorry. The game came out when I was like three years old. No. And I only played System Shock 2. And now I feel old. This guy over here pulling his nerd cred. I played the game before you did. I played the game before you were born. Yeah. I, I don't even really care about that <laughs> stuff. It's okay. Uh, when I pick up my Tamagotchi from daycare, I'll, I'll complain to him. <laughs> John, do we have a, a cabinet in the game yet? I don't think we do. I do have the model for it, though. Not the upgraded model, but the original. Right. Um, I, when did you first play the game, Daniel? Who boy. Uh, going back to maybe... Well, I played, I would say maybe... Here, here, let's try this instead. Don't, don't answer yet. Here's how we'll actually find out when you first played. What kind of machine did you play on? Give me the specs. Ooh. I nice. can't remember. I can't remember that. I would not be able to remember that either. Well, I as the resident, <laughs> as the resident have... ranking nerd, I'm sorry to cut you off twice. I'm really sorry about that. But nerd. I have to. I'm going to let you finish. But I got to tell you here. Um, okay. I played on a Pentium <laughs> 166 megahertz processor with 16 megabytes of RAM, Windows 95, and I didn't even have a video card. That's what I played <laughs> on. I had a lot of different computers I had access to growing up because my grandpa did programming and my ex-stepdad worked for an IT company that I would go to and hang out on the summer on my summer breaks. So I had access to a lot of computers, but I would not be able to tell you anything about any of them. Well, the machine that I quoted was an AST. Can't even remember the model number of it, but it was a... Uh... 1995 machine that I played first on 
and I had the enhanced edition with the CD. Uh, so I had all the audio logs. I didn't even know there was a floppy version, but that's actually where all the the text of the audio logs comes from, and it's why they don't match the uh, audio versions, which has also been a point of irritation for me for about 20 years now. I feel like I'm very lucky, and I might be part of that first generation that just got to be able to grow up with computers and stuff, mm. just like that with internet and whatnot. So you're a millennial then? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, boy. We're all millennials here, right? I think so. I think you know, so. that was one of the things that, that um, now that I think about it, was really surprising because my parents didn't allow me to have gaming consoles growing up. And we just like, that sucks. all of a sudden my dad's like, we're getting a computer. Like, oh, okay. Like, I don't know anything about computers. I'm 10 years old. Uh, and he just went out and he figured out what was the best and he came home with a um, Hewlett Packard Pentium 100 megahertz, 8 megs of RAM Ooh. 4x CD-ROM drive Ooh. Um, it was like top of the line I remember he like he's, we got our tax return and it was pretty big and I think he got that and he also got a SCSI card and like the largest commercial scanner that you could get at the time <laughs> and uh like an inkjet printer he got like all this stuff all at once and i remember like we brought it home he like built a desk for it and it had this whole like library like a suite of cd-roms that came with it like national geographic uh bo like inside the body 3d uh mega race um what other not very many games but i remember like going to sit down on it and immediately he was like no nobody <laughs> touches the computer until we read like the manual and it came with a <laughs> manual wow uh, but it was windows 3.1 and uh he bought they bought me my very first game which was uh dark forces and uh they showed me how to open up the dos prompt and you know, load the game from DOS. Um, okay. and Got a question for you, Steve. Man. Yeah. You said you couldn't play gaming consoles. Was there a specific reason why? Um, I'd have to ask my parents that because I, I think that they just didn't want me. Like, I had a, a best friend at the time who had a Super Nintendo. And uh, he was just this like sickly white, pale kid all the time. And I mm. think my parents were like, oh, well, he's got a console. He like never gets oh, sunlight. He's like this husk of a human being. We don't <laughs> want our child to be like him. That sounds so sad. <laughs> sunlight. <laughs> well, he was so... like, 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 we were best friends growing up, but I think it had more to do with his diet. Like his diet was just terrible. Like. Red meat every night, soda, no vegetables, kind of kid. Oh boy. Uh, Did you? Boy. Yeah. <laughs> Did you do anything stupid as a kid? Tons. Of no, stuff. never. I Perfect ask you in because. Every way. <laughs> well, I ask you because I'm leading into a into a little segue here about why yeah. I lost access to my gaming console. <laughs> and it's uh, it's not going to help Daniel's. Uh, accusation earlier of Americans and guns. <laughs> oh, now I'm um, interested. I really don't want to tell this story, but I, it's when I heard you say that you couldn't play gaming consoles, the first thing that popped in my mind was 1996 when I shot a garbage van in the back with a BB gun. <gasps> oh, <God. laughs> with a BB gun, okay. So a I, I had a an air pumped uh, BB gun. It wasn't you couldn't even hurt anybody with the stupid thing, right? But well, you actually probably could. If you hit him in the eye, you could hurt him. But I remember my dad had recently got me a Sega Genesis, and I was a huge Sonic nerd. And in some ways, I still am. I'll still play Sonic 3 and stuff with my kids. It's tons of fun. Um, but I, I got into the BB gun. I was doing some target practice in the backyard, and, like, 10-year-old dumbass me thinks, hmm, I'm going to go play target practice with the garbage man. <laughs> yeah. So, so I... <laughs> I go in the backyard and I line up my shot on this garbage man. This poor bastard. I, I line my shot up on his back and he's got like heavy clothing on, right? So it's not like it even hurt him. Sure. But like, you know, I, I, 
I, I pumped the shot, I, I filled it up, I put a couple BBs in, pow! Just nailed him. St I mean, it was a good shot. D dead in the back, square of his back. Okay. <laughs> I, I nailed him. All right. Now, here's the problem. Like, when you're a kid, right, you don't really think about the consequences of your actions. You don't really, you can't think beyond the moment. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to shoot this guy in the back. Nothing uh... bad's going to happen. <laughs> I forgot that people react to these things. So I shoot this guy. He turns around and he immediately starts wondering, where did that shot come from? I would need to figure that out. So I hide in my dad's bedroom. I have the doors locked. They knew where it came from. It's pretty obvious. The trajectory was like directly pointing at the backyard of my house. Yeah. And the police show up. Uh, I didn't answer the door, but we're in jail for five years. Oh yeah, the cops showed up. Oh, and my. fun fact about this, um, being a kid, I didn't know any better, so I just started blabbing. I'm like, I just totally incriminating myself to this cop. I'm like, are you guys here because I shot that garbage man in the back? <laughs> 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 so, uh, so when my dad found out, uh, I didn't realize he's as strong as he. Is. Well, he's not as strong now. He's in his fifties, but. Um, he was really strong when I was a kid because he took the goddamn gun barrel and bent it into a U shape. Ooh. That sounds like a cartoon. Yeah, yeah, it was frightening. And then he took my Sega Genesis away. He took away all my games. And he bent the Sega into a U. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. See. And, and then he bent you into a U. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not hard. We're all flexible, right? But. Uh, oh. So I lost. That's how I lost my gaming privileges on my Sega Genesis. <laughs> you shot someone. I shot someone. <laughs> I just love the way you phrase it. Like, I'm gonna go, gonna go play, target play target practice now. with the garbage man. <laughs> it is to this day the stupidest thing I've ever done in my life. That uh, the second most stupid thing was the time I got visited by the FBI. But that's a time for another story. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. Yeah. I didn't do anything wrong, though. And I don't want to talk about it, because it's long. Hmm. Whew. Tune in next stream to hear the dirty secret. Suspicious. Clickbait. Yeah. Whew. Oh, wow, he's out. <sighs> yeah, I, I'm trying to think. I, I did some pretty dumb shit. Uh, <laughs> but, like, I'm trying to think of, like, what was, like, the worst. Um... There was this one time where we got the bright idea to build a potato cannon. Oh my god. And I don't know if you've ever made one of these things, but it's like a mm -hmm. basically like an eight foot long PVC pipe with like a yeah. um, combustion chamber. And uh, you get full size potatoes. Um, you can like shave the end of the PVC so it's kind of sharp and when you uh, put the, pea, the the potato in there and kind of carves it perfectly to shape so there's like uh, it's really tight around the chamber and then you can you can pack it down like with a broom handle or something it's like old school gun technology and uh, my dad helped us build it of course and um, we started using propane so we would fill it up with propane and then we had like integrated in like a barbecue igniter into it so you could just click the button and it would just shoot the cannon it's super slick um also very loud it sounded like a shotgun when it went off uh and so one night of course uh we had just built it and my friends and i we were at the, like the midnight premiere i think of like lord of the rings and it ended and for whatever reason, I was like, hey, Eric, my best friend, like, let's go. Hey, shoot Eric, the, my best friend. <laughs> let's go shoot the potato cannon in the community field. Like, it'll be really fun. Plus, like, you'll be able to see the, uh, you know, the flame shoot out of the barrel at night, which is really cool. So we get up there and uh, we decide to step it up a notch and wrap the potato in um, steel wool. <laughs> and we sh we just start shooting the potato cannon like <laughs> just launching it in the middle of the night it's like four o'clock in the morning 
and there's these like flaming potatoes just shooting hundreds of feet in the air. <laughs> and we're having a good laugh and you know, having a great time. And we put the potato cannon in the car. Eric drives me back home. He, you know, drops me off. I take the potato cannon, put it in the uh, in the garage. I go to bed. Well, ten minutes later, as I'm lying there, I'm seeing like red and blue flashing lights outside my house. Uh oh! <laughs> oh, busted! Yep. And uh, soon enough, you know, knock, knock, knock. I go, and Eric is there, and there are these two cops. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, hey, Steve, can you get the potato cannon? And I look at the cops and I'm like, what potato cannon? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, no, 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 don't pull this shit with me right now. Go get the potato cannon. And the cops are just like, you know, looking at me like, come on, like, this isn't good. You need to take this seriously. So I go and I get it. And I hand it to the cops, and they're looking it over, and they're like, oh, you know, this is really, really cool, guys. Like, great ingenuity, great craftsmanship, but could you not fire this thing at 4 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> and they just start laughing, and they're like, have a really good night. And they just left us there. And meanwhile, like, the whole neighborhood's getting up because they two cop cars outside my house. Mm. Well, apparently, what had happened... Uh, somebody called the cops and reported uh, like somebody was shooting a gun and Eric was the only car on the road at the time and so they pulled him over um, they pulled out their guns and they forced him out of the car at gunpoint because they thought he was armed and they had him over the roof of his car and they were searching him and he was like basically desperately trying to explain to them that we were shooting a potato cannon in the woods and so they put him in the cop car, and they drove into my house to prove it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Poor Eric, he was like, wow. he was shaking when he was knocking on my door because, you know, he had two cops pointing their guns at him like ten minutes earlier. Wow. Wow. I wonder if he's still your friend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, best friend, still. To this day? Yeah. I hear a cat. Yeah, yeah, he's in here now. He's bugging me. So yeah, that was pretty dumb. Daniel. Yeah? Do you want to hear my FBI story? Oh, you could save it for another stream. I, like, we've overloaded this with really cool stories, but we should, we should tease the audience a little bit. Just save well, it for we the have one. 20 minutes left of the stream. It won't take 20 minutes. Uh, I'll leave it down to you. Yeah, up to you. We could save it. I'll get it, it out. I'll get it out. Because I, I want to remember as best as I can what happened to me that night. Um... So, remember when we were talking about funny place names in Florida? Like Yeehaw Junction and Taintsville? Yes. Taintsville. Nice. Okay. The, I used to live in a town in the Panhandle that, remember when I took my vacation, I went up to a place called Destin? Um, but there's a town next to Destin that's actually called Niceville. Uh, <laughs> not even joking, that's literally what it's called. Nice. Um, yes. It's not so nice. It's, it's redneck land. But, oh, boy. Uh, so long story short, back in the early zero zeros last decade, uh, I was self-teaching myself how to be a 3D artist. And this was before the time when we had Google image search that actually like was worth anything. So <clears throat> I got the idea of like, and again, modding, I got the idea of making a deathmatch map based on like an oil field oil like refinery. And the area that I was in had a uh, bunch of oil tanks and I'm like oh, this is kind of cool let me go get some reference to this well problem is I decided to do this at like 12 in the morning okay and this is an area that's surrounded by like the entire area is surrounded by what's called Eglin Air Force Base and it's the largest Air Force Base in the world it's like 200 some odd square miles it's massive it surrounds everything up there so these guys are like really heightened about security and it, this is like right after 9-11 so taking pictures of anything was automatically like you're gonna blow this up um so i i went out at night and i'm like i want to go get some reference photos of this thing at night because i wanted to set it at night and i wanted to see what it looked like at night i got there and immediately i 
had thought of this restaurant that my mother had wanted to take me to and she wanted to know what time it opened. So I swung by to check it out. And as I left the restaurant driving out, I got pulled over by a cop and I'm like, okay, what did I do? I, I never go over the speed limit, stuff like that. So it must be something wrong with the vehicle. Uh, and he's just thinking I was casing the place to try to break into it because they'd had robberies there before or sorry, burglaries. And turns out, uh, well, no, I'm, I'm just like this scrawny kid who can't do anything at this point. So I'm, he just let me go with a warning. He's like, yeah, don't don't break into this place. I'm like, no shit. What do you think I'm going to do? Break into it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so I go off on my, my merry way and this oil place is like right down the street from the restaurant. So that's why I swung by. So I go over, I get some pictures, head out. And then I'm like, OK, I want to add a radio tower to this because I'm a nerd for blinky lights and stuff. And radio towers in the U.S. have tons of like red lights on them because they have to be uh, compliant with uh, Federal Aviation Administration regs. And I go into the woods to get pictures of this thing. And I got this crappy Fuji camera. It's like when digital cameras were like really becoming a thing. So it may have had like maybe three megapixels at most and really garbage image quality. I go into the woods. There's nobody there. It's totally dead. I'm not even I shit you not. I walk out of the woods. The entire Niceville police force is there, guns drawn, pointed directly at me. <laughs> wow. I I just about shat myself staring at this. I Immediately, my hands go up. Now, if you've seen the hacker in Shock 1, this is kind of what I looked like at that point. I had, like, really long hair drawn back in a ponytail. Uh, I'm tall and lanky. So I look like this just hippie nerd out there with a camera on his neck not really a threat to much of anything and these guys just they have the canine unit there and everything like they have like these dobermans that are just like really really scary looking and i'm like oh god i really fucked up this time didn't i so without even really asking me about what was going on or why they were there they're just like we need your consent to search your vehicle blah 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 and me not knowing any better i'm like yeah sure go ahead i don't have anything to hide <laughs> So they, they search through it, they find a tire iron, and that's about it. Because, you know, you have to have a tire iron to change a tire. Uh, unless you want to use your teeth. And um, they're like, okay, well, we didn't find anything, so you're free to go. But you may have a run-in with the FBI tomorrow. So just a heads up, sign this paperwork, letting us know that you agree to this, and blah, blah, blah. And I didn't know any better, so I signed. And at this point in time, my life was spent sleeping in really late so i went to bed at like four in the morning and i woke up at probably 8 30 9 o'clock to the sound of pounding on my front door and it wasn't like you're like you know ups comes and they just ding dong or something these guys were like the beating my door down so I, I walk up and you know get dressed as quick as i can and there's these two men in black standing there and when I say men in black, I mean, literally, these guys were dressed in all black suits with black sunglasses and a no bullshit demeanor. Like, it was pretty intimidating. They walk in. They're like, we got some questions about what happened last night. We want to see what you're doing and why you did what you did. And I'm like, sure, come on in. This won't take long, I'm thinking. I show them the, the, the maps and stuff I was building. I show them some of the terrain and stuff. And this is all just garbage quality 3D art. Like, think of the worst student art you can make and multiply that by like 0.5 so it's even worse and that's what it was it was just garbage and they look at it and they turn to each other and they're like this is the stupidest fucking thing we've ever been called out for <laughs> and then they're like we're, we're sorry you wasted our time and then they left <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah and i have never had an issue with the fbi since and thankfully because I don't want to deal with that ever again. That was scary, man. I thought I was going to Gitmo. I mean, like, that was the point of time where you had to worry about that kind of thing. It was frightening. Mm. Jeez. I can't imagine that. Just yeah. walking out of, a, out, out of the woods and just finding... <laughs> goodness knows how many policemen just pointing their guns at you. Gee, I can't imagine that. And the Bobbies in the UK, they don't really use guns, do they? Uh, they use harsh language. Or in North... It, it, if you're in London, yes, they will use guns. Uh, but outside of that, no. They'll chase you and maybe taser you, but they don't have guns. Yeah, so 
you can imagine the amount of pants shitting I was going through, having an entire police force sitting there pointing their guns at me in a semi-circle formation. Yeah. Like, that is the closest I've ever felt to being on a firing squad. I don't want to be there again. No, I can imagine not. So, that's the fun story for today. Uh, switching things back to System Shock for a while, uh, do we have a biological systems monitor? Uh, we probably do, actually. I think it's in the interactables, probably into the pickups. Maybe under hardware. Uh, pickups, pickups. I don't have hardware. Uh, it would actually just be in the pickups folder. And I believe it's called... Yeah, Bioscan. There you are. Oh, Bioscan, right. I missed that. Yeah, that's the only uh, thing I can think it would be. I'll be back. My wife wants to talk to me. Okay. <laughs> Probably saying, John, you really shouldn't have told that story. Now they have to relocate. Mm-hmm. FBI are coming back now. I wasn't expecting all that story time on stream, man. let me tell you, that was fun. Here's a quick question. Will the hacker have access to AOL, chat rooms, and Netscape Navigator in the <laughs> <laughs> Prodigy internet only. We have about 10 minutes left of the stream if anyone has any other questions. I think I'm done with this level, you know. Oh. Should we wrap it up now, then, with the uh, final words? Nah, let's not wrap it up now. We'll keep nah. going. Nah. Well, any words for the last ten minutes? Um. Don't fire potato cannons at four in the morning. Yeah, that's a good one. Very much don't do um, that. Don't trespass school and climb on the roof. Yep, don't do that. Um... um Always drink lots of water. Stay hydrated. <laughs> yeah, until until more props go in the uh, the game for now. But do we have beds? We should have beds somewhere. But they're not All interactable. System Shock but... have secret audio logs with those stories we just heard. <laughs> Um, this video will go up on YouTube. We could copy and paste the audio. Yeah, that's right. I should have thought about that before I decided to private stories to the whole internet. Hmm. Yeah. Sorry, I had to step away there. My wife was telling me that uh, apparently Battle for Azeroth just came out. I was gonna say the FBI is at the door. Oh or... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, ba Battle of Azeroth is code for the FBI is here. I've got to go. Yeah, Battle for Azeroth is out. Say goodbye to your loved ones. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye. I can't wait till we get further along in this game and we can actually start doing audio logs. Though. That is going to be fun. we got to make sure we put Steve on that grove, too. Hmm. Sure, why not? Just launch me into space. <laughs> Look, man. We, we know we shouldn't have done it, but... You know, if you wanted to ride Gamma Groove off Great Black, well then, good riddance. I mean, it sounds like fun. Our experiment needed a good test case, so we conked him on the noggin and we shot him into space. Alright, yeah, I mean, uh, you know what would be cool is if we had a corpse dressed in the uh, Deep 13 outfit. <laughs> That'd be fun. Oh my god, we could so do that. Except we'd have to call it, I don't know, Deep something else. Nah, we could call it that. Um, we're definitely gonna, somebody's gonna have to remember this, but I will hide a Crow T robot and a Tom Servo on board somewhere. <laughs> uh, Carly, did you just post a link? Because it got redacted. <laughs> I wrote redacted. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Get trolled, son. Mm hmm. Yeah, you got me there. <laughs> you know, I was thinking we could go totally like horrible fan fiction and just have the development team come to rescue the hacker halfway in between the game. That way we don't ever die. 
Steve could burst through a window with a cape on and go, it is I! Esteban kick! <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a tr <laughs> Sorry. Do we have what? <laughs> Do we have... <laughs> uh, sorry. Do we have a tri optimum fun pack module? Uh, do you actually find that in the ground? Yes, you find it uh, in the um, the viewing room. I don't think. Well, there's mini games, but I don't think there's much in the way of them just yet. I'll leave so, that alone. Uh, I'll leave that alone for now, then. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't mess with it just yet. Lady Lenny says, "Don't forget to put a locked door in." An R and D section with NDS logo and says restricted access sign. <laughs> All our dark secrets will be in there. Mm -hmm. Will there be multiple styles of corpse and will they be modded after backers or only name after them? Um, those who were a part of those tiers would have gotten a survey that um, would say what it is. Um, they're not going to be specifically modeled after people if, you know, their limbs and stuff at that tier. The only ones that have something to look like them is the tier that says they get a portrait. Mm -hmm. We're not letting people name their corpse Corpsey McCorp face, are we? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. We we have already established that it has to be law friendly, and if it isn't law friendly, uh, it won't get included. Or we'll, or, we'll, or we'll ask you to uh, give us another name. It's not lore friendly. You have to deal with me because <laughs> I would be the one contacting you. Ooh. And you can don't we? Wanna... Can Sorry. we add a garbage man shooting mini game? <laughs> <laughs> in a in a potato launching mini game. Uh, Question: Will the energy wet. weapons actually use batteries as ammo, or will they be limited to using hacker's battery again? Which will be using battery? Sorry. Uh, will the energy weapons actually use batteries as ammo, or will there be will they be limited to using hacker's battery again? Uh, they'll probably pull from the energy pool, just like the original. Yeah, five minutes left of the stream. Any final questions, thoughts, concerns? I'm concerned uh, that some of the Kickstarter money will be used to bail out one of our artists. <laughs> huh? Look, I am clean. Okay? <laughs> my nose has been clean for the past 20 years. I did my time in in-school suspension, thank you very much. <laughs> we don't have any potted plants in the game yet, do we? Uh, in terms of Shock 1 assets, or in terms yeah. of Shock on asses. No, because those are actually billboards that rotate to face the direction the camera's facing. Mm hmm. So the answer to that question is no. And I think third might figure it out at some point, but I'm not sure. I, I mean, like, as a model to place in the remake. Oh, in the remake? No, that would be most likely something we would source from, like, the Mega Scans library. Oh, yeah. Okay. Unless we really want to spend the time to make potted plants. Um. Yeah, I'm finding uh, finding it tough to find objects I haven't placed. This level might be done for now until we get new assets in. Yeah, so. there's not a whole lot of Yee. stuff involved in placing the, the objects, thankfully. Mm, yeah, and level 6 is very sparse on objects, so that was done in two hours, so we can chalk that one up as a success. Now, fun fact, it takes about two hours to do, like, maybe 10% of the texturing and lighting for the map, depending on the map. But that number is exponentially worse or higher as you spend time placing the objects as well. So That's why I like you, Daniel. You're taking all my hard work and, and making it less hard. <laughs> No problem.
Uh, there's some more questions, but I keep sneezing, so one moment. <laughs> Okay, I think I can read. Um, so do the crew of Citadel have energy pools? And if not, how do they power them? Oh, the tools. Power tools. Energy tools? Uh, I'm confused by what they're saying. Well, I would assume that the, the crew actually would use batteries to power the objects but because you have a power suit on you don't really need to do that you just power your suit the suit power is whatever you're working with i mean that's really the only way it makes any sense man look right guys this. sorry i got distracted by my own kind of handiwork. I remember building this sign that displayed out where all the groves were. It took me ages to do. That was the weirdest sign, because it never did anything in the game. Mm. It it kind of implied that you could interact with it in some way, like with the, the interact text, but it didn't really do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I hear that cat. Say meow, 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 back. Meow, yeah, meow. Yeah. Yeah, what just, kind of cat is that, Steve? He's just chirping. Yeah, it's a loud cat. <laughs> hey, Wayne. What kind of cat breed is it, Steve? Uh, he's just a... I don't know. I guess domestic <laughs> long hair, medium hair, short hair. Tabby. The short hair tabby with white. Meow. And a loud mouth. Meow. Meow. He sounds really cool. He's pretty chill. He likes to sleep with us every night. <laughs> I like how talking so, to me. He's talking. My yeah. cat Artemis, the Siamese cat, he does the thing that dogs do where he scoops under your hand for pets. Aww. And I love it. He's just like, scoop. And then mm -hmm. he likes to lay on my chest and lick my face. Is it a safe bet that your cat is named Artemis because of a particular TV show made in Japan? No, it's not, <laughs> actually. It was because my other cat, Apollo. Oh. I need a picture of that cat. Everyone, quickly to Discord and post cats. <laughs> That's what the Pet Cute Animals channel is for. Wow. All right, it's four o'clock. That means the stream is wrapping up. Oh. And we need final words from everyone. Final thoughts, questions, concerns cats what about um, snakes are snakes okay snakes how about dragonites dragonites okay mm, yes ooh there's a question in chat there's lots of questions we're not going to get to them all yeah there are lots of questions um we're going to have to call time on this, guys, I'm afraid, because it's now midnight and I need to be up later. So uh, we're going to start wrapping this up now. So anybody got any final things they want to say? The final thing I have to say is that the Kickstarter update is um, in chat. So click it, go read it. Ooh. Cool. Woo. Not a long one, but uh, for everybody that's been joining us on the stream... Um, it basically just reiterates a lot of what's been said. We got cheers as well. Uh, for, we got pyramids from obsolete pro. Oh dear, program. 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 All right. Um, we, we got Mexican Swiss. <laughs> Tasted the same question three times. Did we not answer you? I saw on Night Dive's Twitter that the, all of Citadel's maps are complete, except the Garden Groves. If this is true, then why are you replacing map items? Uh, well, that's the next stage of things. Yeah, the blockout's done, but now we got to put items in the blockouts. Mm-hmm. We, we have to work in stages. Yep. 
Because now the block okay. cat's done, the art team can go in and do things while I have other things to do. So we kind of all work in tandem and it's, it's all good. It's all good. Mm-hmm. All things in due time. Alrighty. Dan, you want to play us out? Uh, yeah, I can do. So, um, yeah, this has been, this has been a fun one. I've, I've enjoyed the stream today. Um, got a fair bit done, actually. Um, oh, I was going to show off some new stuff, wasn't I, before we quickly wrapped up, wasn't I? I could show off, uh, I guess, storage? that okay? Hey. Hey, that's my territory. You stay out of storage. <laughs> All right, I'll show off. Nah, uh, nah, go ahead. I don't right. know if I've uploaded everything I've done to it recently, but yeah, go ahead and show it off. Okay. Let's get some lighting in here. So, here's storage. Ooh. And I love that thing. We got some oh, you cool need, stuff. You, you need yeah. to change your exposure settings. They are like off the chain right now. I don't need to change anything. It looks fine. <laughs> you're, excuse me, sir. You're misrepresenting my work, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Oh, yeah. Actually, you know what? You're right. Game settings, right? Sometimes I'm right. Mm -hmm. That dang bloom. Yeah. yeah, just go to the... Oh, yeah, God, get out of there. <laughs> um, yeah, just set it to yeah game. Oh, there you go. That's more like it. That's too dark. You can't see nothing. Well, excuse me, sir. If you if you don't have darkness, then how do you have horror? <laughs> <laughs> Looking really cool. Really spooky as well. This area isn't lit, lit yet, so I won't go down here. But uh... could you do me a favor and press G? Oh yeah, there we go. I didn't know that did that. Okay. Did you hide the grid or something? No, I hid the text. Oh, it enables game grid. mode, so it gets rid of all the extraneous stuff. Hmm, how about that? That is very cool. See, it's good that you're showing this off, because Steve can see that I'm actually doing work. That's true. <laughs> I have no other way of knowing. Otherwise... Oh, look at this area. Look at that high voltage text. Ah, that looks so cool. See, for all Steve knows, I could be playing Fortnite all the time. <laughs> What's that? I see you in Fortnite. Oh, you do, do you? I, are we... Oh, maybe we're not. I was going to say, are we friends on Epic, on the Epic Game Launcher thing? I don't think we are, but if you want to get carried through some duos, join up. I'm not very good at... Fortnite, but I'm good at battle uh, battlegrounds. Yeah, I actually check my Fortnite stats. I'm like ranked 15k out of like the entire world out of like 20 million players. No so. way. Yeah, that's serious. All right, I'm gonna call it there. So you guys gotta look at storage. So once again, guys, thanks very much for tuning in, and watching, spending some time with us. And uh, who's streaming next? If you scroll below, you'll see our schedule, everyone. Um, tomorrow... No, no, no. My bad. Um, on Thursday uh, is our next one. Um, we'll have Chris in the morning, and then Jonathan will have you later in the night. Certainly Ooh. will. <laughs> no trouble? Yippers. I actually volunteered for extra streams this month, so you guys, if you hate listening to me, then I feel sorry for you. <laughs> I don't have a scheduled stream for myself this week because I th think I'm too busy, but I might come in and just finish up my Hamtaro Ham Hams Unite playthrough. Mm hmm. Okay, right, calling it there. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. And tune in next time when we might have more interesting stories and things to show you. So until then, bye bye, everybody. Stay safe. Bye, 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 Stay bye, bye, hydrated. Bye, 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 bye. See ya. See ya.